Good morning, YouTube. I am back to let you guys know how do you log food when you're out to a restaurant. This month, we are doing one uh, habit, and our habit we're doing this month is logging your food before you eat. So, um, or logging your food in general and becoming aware of what it is to do, like logging food, how to do it, just having conversations around that, because that is the one habit that actually changed my life um, the most as far as my eating disorder. Um, it also helped me reach all kinds of goals, whether it was bikini competition stuff or CrossFit games, recently losing 20 pounds. Um you know, keeping up with what I'm doing when my head was hurting, I had trigeminal neuralgia and I had migraines every day. So keeping up with the food that I was putting in and what was hurting my head made a really big difference. Like this habit of figuring out and logging what you put in your body and taking ownership of it um, is one of the best habits you can create. Now, you don't have to do this for the rest of your life. You could just do it in order to reach a goal and use it as a tool that you put in your tool bag. Um, but today I want to talk about eating out because a lot of times the clients that I work with, they'll say, you know, I logged my food when I was home and it was perfect and I could weigh it. But when I went to eat, I just didn't know how to log the food. Couple hints. Number one, when you go out to eat, it is a lot easier to log food if you buy, I mean, if you purchase things that are, individual foods. So for instance, instead of getting a casserole, you grab something that is like chicken, broccoli, rice, or, you know, steak, sweet potato, salad, and you can individually log those things. For the meat, you can ask how many ounces it is. Um, as far as like chicken breast, you usually can estimate. And that's one of the reasons you want to weigh your food when you're home so that you can estimate food when you're out. You'll get used to what does four ounces of meat look like? What does a hundred grams of uh, vegetables look like? What does, you know, 200 grams of rice look like? So when you log your food at home, I would encourage you to always use the same numbers. When you log your green beans, always use 100 uh, grams. When you log um, even like ice cream, use, you know, a specific amount so that you can figure out what that size of that food looks like on a regular basis. Then your brain automatically knows, well, this is 100 grams, a little over 100 grams. Maybe it's 125 because you've seen what a hundred grams of that food looks like on a regular basis. So hint number one, order foods that are individualized. Now we all want to eat food that we love. Like, Hey, you know, maybe you go to Olive Garden and you love lasagna. That's not individual foods. So what you want to do is, um, log the lasagna from the chain restaurant. So look up Olive Garden, or if you're at a restaurant that is like Olive Garden, but it is a local restaurant, log it as Olive Garden, because a lot of times inside the food apps, the um, restaurants will have all of their food in there so that you can kind of know you're around about in the right area of what your food at a different restaurant that's not the, um, the main chain restaurant would be like. So Pizza is a great one to talk about. So you know that Papa John's Pizza, Domino's Pizza, Pizza Hut Pizza, um, Little Caesars Pizza, all of those are a lot different. And there's thin crust at different places, and you've probably tried all different kinds. So if I go to a place, because down in Florida, a lot of times, all of the restaurants we go to, they're not chain restaurants. So I will log the pizza like the chain restaurant that it's most similar to. So if it's greasier and it's thicker, I'll usually put um, Pizza Hut. If it's more doughy and doesn't have as much grease, but a lot more sauce, then I usually put Papa John's, um, et cetera, et cetera. So that way you actually have a normal size pizza um, because they put their information in there and they've actually, you know, kind of got an idea of what the right calories, protein, carbs, and fats are for each slice. Um, 
The other thing is when you order something that has sauce on it, make sure you put that sauce on the side. So if you're going to put, you know, two tablespoons of ranch on your salad, when they bring the salad out, if it already has ranch on it, you really don't know how much is on there. It's kind of hard to estimate when it's all in the salad or if they even like mix it up. It's hard to know. So I order the salad separate. I piece together like what is in the salad. So I'll log lettuce, cheese, croutons, tomatoes, bacon bits, eggs, whatever it is, and estimate it. Then the sauce on the side, you can kind of see how much it is. Okay, this is two tablespoons. I'm going to pour this in. And another hint, if you're in a deficit, just dip your fork in and use that because a lot of times you don't need as much dressing as you think if you're trying to cut calories. If you're trying to add calories, pour that mess on there and go for it. Um, so that's really helpful to do. Also, anything you order when it comes to eggs or steak or anything, just know when you eat out, the fats are what you miss. You typically don't think about when you cook a steak at home, you don't take a tab of butter and stick it on top and let, you know, 14 grams of butter seep into that steak. But this is why the steaks when we go out are a lot more tasty because they have a lot more fat in them. Um, even if it's a filet, they're going to put a lot of wonderful butter and things like that on it. So what I do if I order a steak and it's a six ounce steak and I get a filet, then I add an extra tablespoon of butter with that order. Um, same thing, you know, when you're getting um, chicken, they usually put stuff like that on there. When you're getting eggs, most of the time when I cook eggs at home, I use the Pam spray. At restaurants, a lot of times they'll use oil and then you'll have, you know, maybe a half a tablespoon of oil inside the eggs and the cheese and the stuff that you're making so that it doesn't stick and that so that they can rotate and get a lot of orders out faster because that way their skillet never gets um, sticky. So I hope this helps. When you go out to a restaurant, make sure you just try to log. The best thing to do is just to try to put your food in and start to become comfortable with it. Remember this month, all we're doing is logging our food, simply putting it in the app, learning how the apps work, learning what we're putting in our body, looking at correlations. I mean, you might even find this month that you eat something and your stomach kind of gets bloated. You eat something again and you're like, hmm, I think I had this two or three days ago and I remember my stomach getting bloating. And all of a sudden you have control of your body and you realize what's causing all the things that are going on. Hopefully this helps and I'll see you guys tomorrow.